Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Data in London. I'm here with Darren from Google. Darren, how you doing? Good. Yeah. Yeah, so you gave a keynote today, and in that keynote, you talked about how important AI is to Google. What, why, what, what is AI? I mean, I think a lot of people are saying AI is in their future, but you're an AI company? Yeah, Google's uh, mission from the very beginning was you know, to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And this led us, I guess, to do some of our best work was trying to solve problems around big data. And, that, and that's been the history of the company. But you know, now the kind of problems that we need to solve to run our own business are essentially AI problems. And the same pattern that we followed all along, where we've developed technology for ourselves to drive our own business, and then after it's been battle-hardened for sometimes like 10 years, making that external, allowing customers to use it as well, the same's happening with AI. So things that we're developing for ourselves uh, to be able to do uh, machine learning and, and models that we're building, we're now making that available to customers as well. So we find ourselves you know, becoming an AI company. These are, this is the future, this is where big data is headed. This is the, these are the challenges that are left to solve. So you've been, you guys have been swimming Google in, in data for a long time. What do we define as big or what, what is now yeah. all of a sudden big? Because you guys have been working with massive data sets all along and all of a sudden we're now coming to a point to where with IOT, with mm -hmm. cars, with everything going on, are we finally getting to a point where we can label it big? It's huge. I mean, the, the when I think back to the initial paper of uh, you know the, the the business proposal for Google, I think it was based on a, a, a model that said, well, if everyone generates uh, you know I think a few k of data across the U.S. in a, a year, k. I think it was like 850 terabytes. We might conceivably be able to index. If Moore's law kept it up for another 15 iterations, we might just be able to do it. And you know. Of course, we we're always confronted by these, you know, incredible, um, you know, mind-boggling numbers. But yeah, I mean, at Google, it's a real problem because you know, big data ceases to be very meaningful as a as a qualifier. So we just tend to talk about data now and uh, think about things from a, a you know a, a cloud hyperscale. So the bigness of data is leading us to AI. But is it AI that's the the important component, or is it machine learning, or are they synonymous and connected always? Well, machine learning is just a subset of the discipline that is artificial right. intelligence, of course. So being able to predict an outcome from a set of inputs or, from, or to identify and classify something is two common things. Um, um, but um, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're coming from a point where, you know, uh, data is having to not just look historically at, at things and we, we don't just want to know what just happened to us. Now we're interested in solving problems that you know, wouldn't it be great if, if, if the machines were able to alert us to things, that we were able to learn about what might be about to happen. And other things where it's very complicated for the human brain to take in you know, all kinds of different parameters. Computers are really good at that. So certain kinds of problems become possible to solve that really just weren't before. And so this is a very exciting time to be in computer science. So can, can I ask, why do we call it artificial intelligence? I mean, I mean to me, it seems like Computers making sense out of data and numbers should be like fact, not artificial. <laughs> I mean, is is it just a, uh, because it's not from our own brain? Yeah, I think that you, you've opened up a, a field of existential thinking there that might be uh, <laughs> beyond my ability to uh, sufficiently <laughs> articulate. But yeah, I think it's where, where computers start to act in a way that's indistinguishable from human beings from something that makes us uh, able to understand um, you know, difficult concepts. And a great example was um, when we used to map languages from one to the other, we used to have to understand and parse the languages and we used to make a kind of a transferal between those. But when we started to apply you know, AI techniques and machine learning techniques to this, we, the, the machines were able to understand um, the input that, from one language and even to a language that we hadn't mapped to at all, it was able to create uh, you know, a translation into that language that we hadn't actually mapped directly. It's as if the machine itself had some understanding of what the concept was in a language neutral sense and was able to then use the models to you know, um, articulate that in, 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 at the end as a result. So that's really quite an astonishing thing when machines are e really able to learn, um, you know, it opens up possibilities of problems that have seemed out of reach for many, many years. 
and is something else enabling that the cloud basically because before it used to be done on a processor or you know CPUs or GPUs or whatever now with the cloud are we more infinite in our resources or what does that look like exactly I mean the cloud is what's going to make this not science fiction but absolutely possible before we had the cloud we weren't able to appropriate these kinds of you know enormous computing resources to, to you know, f for simple things. We weren't able to um, quickly harness millions of machines, you know, to think about a problem. Building these models is an intensely computationally intensive task. You know, it doesn't, it's one thing to use a model, but actually building these models relies on vast amounts of data. So back to what is big data. Um, you know, this, the, the two parts of it, being able to create a heuristic that um, develops and is able to um, iterate over time to be more accurate, more accurate possibly than a human being. Um, that's great, and the data science involved in that is key. But you can't beat the size of the data that it trains on. It trumps every time. The amount of data that you train on is much more important, actually, than the, uh, than the heuristic um, in terms of uh, getting that to, to be more accurate. So, you know, Google finds itself in a really strong position with this because um, we've developed what is essentially the cloud to drive all the other um, you know, uh, billion user uh, products that we have. That we, it was to b build our own business. And we ended up kind of creating the cloud. And, and so now that we have that, and we also have this incredibly powerful resource of loads of data to train on, we're able to advance this whole field, both in, in, in photos, in speech, in, in natural language. Th th these are modalities that we can now bring to technology. So can you disentangle, I know Google's all in on AI, and you have Tensor, you have TensorFlow, and you have Tensor, Processing units. Yeah. Can you explain the three or the four, whatever the the package of tensor stuff is? Sure. So I mean, one of the as I was saying, the advantage of having so much data is that we're able to create models that no other company can really do. So uh, if you think about it a bit like a spectrum of of complexity, um, we want to be able to provide pre-trained models that are very very useful for key use cases. So things like you know, so Vision API that you upload a photo, we return. Um, a, a JSON uh, uh, tree of, of, of uh, metadata, and that happens in a few seconds. So it's incredibly quick. You don't have to understand how it works. You don't have to scale the model. You don't have to worry about that. You just use the model. So, so that's fantastic for um, you know, these key fundamentals of AI, if you like, speech, um, vision, um, natural language, translation, these kinds of, and now video intelligence API, by the way, is an, another one. Being able to do this over video is mm. tremendously powerful. So that's great. So that means you can start to build those models, use those just out of the box without any, uh, without having to be an, a, an ML company, really. Um, but you can use those to triage your, you know, like a first stage, and then go deeper with your own models as well. So take, for example, um, uh, say a, a retail company that has a stock of products. Um, the Vision API, you could send it a photo, and it might return, well, this is a lamp. But then you could take the data from that, and, and, and now that you know it's a lamp, you can start to apply it to, well, which lamp is it within our stock? Which skew would it be? So what we hope it can do is you know, get you a long way down your own modeling. So then you might want to then bring to that your, your own model. So you may want to train with a, a set of photos of your own stock and, and take it further than that. So, so we think that what people will do, sometimes they'll just use the, you know, the trained models, and that's good. Um, but in a way, that's kind of, you know, in, in use cases, it's fairly low orbit. <laughs> you know, what we want to get people to think about, too, is being able to extend that, add their own data, their own models. So this is where TensorFlow came in, um, technology that's the most popular ML framework on GitHub now, um, used by data scientists, really, uh, by default these days. And TensorFlow enables you to build these complex models using data science, um, but also to manage those in a serverless way. So we've got, um, you know, the, on, on our cloud portfolio, we want to provide serverless uh, products that allow you to use technology like TensorFlow and, and others, others like Data Lab as well. So being able to actually have a sort of digital notebook about how you're developing the heuristic, um, exchanging that information with other scientists, um, this collaboration is absolutely crucial to building these things well. And then, as you, as you mentioned, uh, the, um, the TPUs is a new innovation, actually, which came out of um, the project uh, uh, with AlphaGo, where we were, we were using, you know, really pushing the frontiers of what AI can really do. Um, and that was custom hardware that was able to uh, be optimized for the specific use case of, of applying a machine learning model. Now, the new version we announced last week at I.O. 
um, cloud TPUs. Uh, this is like the second version of this, and it's also built to uh, optimize for um, the training aspect of data as well. So you can the, the training aspect of building these models is in, you know intensely uh, complex and and. Uh, before we were only really able to use that for the uh, the inference, the usage of the model piece, but now we can do it for both. Um, so these are specific pieces of hardware optimized for this particular kind of task. Uh, they also have onboard a network, uh, so they, they're very good at being combined into large numbers of these altogether into what we call a pod, which is a bit like having a supercomputer at your disposal. Um, it can deliver something like 11 and a half petaflops of, com of floating point operations, uh, just a mind-blowing amount of computing power power that's optimized for doing machine learning training and, and inference stuff. So, you know, we're going to, that's uh, available now. You can sign up for, for, for the alpha of that. But what we want is people to be able to, you know, span the whole spectrum from being able to use these out of the box, pre-trained um, APIs, all the way through to building their own model to even building, you know, highly advanced, pushing the frontier of data science. And are these private or public or combination hybrids? Uh, cloud, like you run all this stuff all of this is just part of the Google Compute Engine, so it's going to be it'll be part of the uh, public service. Uh, on, and on you GCP. determine if you're sharing it public or you with just your own. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. right. So yeah. this is to train the model and use the model, yeah. and uh, once you've got that, you're able to actually, yeah, you can do what you want with that. With that, yeah, of course. Excellent. So, if you were to fast forward 12 months from now, what would you like to see happening in the AI mark in the AI world, because it's growing tremendously and at a really super fast rate. Where do you think we're going to be in 12 months in this AI world, um, since you're now an AI company? Or yeah. You always have been, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's a great question. I think we, we'll see different things. So um, one of the things I, I want us all to think about uh, it, is really showing respect to these new disciplines. You know, it is an iterator, or it is a, a progression, I guess, from, from previous eras. But it is new as well, and there's, there's disciplines we need to learn. So as computer scientists, we need to understand what data science is really about. You know? So um, let's not just rebadge you know, traditional data anal analysis, and, nothing yeah. wrong with that, but yeah. you know, let's understand the differences. And, and actually, when we talk about data science, let's really be sure we know what we mean. And you know, when, when we see people uh, talking about their products, let's not just like rebadge traditional business intelligence, let's, let's understand how fundamentally, profoundly different these kinds of techniques are going to be. And with companies, you know, I think one of the things in the next year we'll start to see um, is this really interesting um, interplay between the data engineer, you know, who is writing code around um, building pipelines and managing prepping data, shaping that data, making it uh, useful for the company. And this new breed of, 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 of hires, which is this sort of data science discipline, uh, which takes that further and, and, and works on, on, on kind of more academic models. So I think companies are wrestling with how to, how, to, how to get the most out of both of these different but important disciplines in this new era. So the data engineer and the data scientist, yeah. one's training data, one's preparing the pipelines and the feeds and all that stuff? Yeah, and, and yeah. exactly. And I think, you, you know, they're coming from very different places. You know, you've got your data engineer that's typically um, someone who's a developer, who's um, comfortable programming, um, you know, in, in Java or Scala or something like that, and they're, and they're they're thinking about agile developments. They're typically used to working on a two-week sprint, and then you're speaking to a data scientist who's coming really from a very academic discipline, someone who's used to thinking in a in a three-year event horizon around a PhD or you know I'm, I'm exaggerating, but yeah. you know they're more that they're, they're part of a science. They 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 issue papers for for peer review, and it's you know, the elegance of the model is what's really driving their interest. So we've got this very interesting combination of these two disciplines. Um, you know, and, and what I see is companies hiring both and struggling to understand where to uh, place them in the organization, how yeah. to even, what's the reporting how line? They, how do they work together? Yeah, yeah. And, and one key question we often ask is, you know, what outcome are you looking to optimize? And uh, we want to have people think about that. You know, it, it's no use bringing machine learning if you don't know what, what it is you're, you're wanting to optimize for. So this, we're getting clearer about you know, how a company wants to develop what matters to it really, um, and how these technologies can be brought to bear you know, to, to move them forwards. Excellent, Darren, we look forward to your journey in, in the AI much. world. Thank you. Thank you.